The Strange Sage was originally developed in Holland uh, by a friend of mine over there for medical use. It's a 50-50 mix that um, a guy made to maintain yield but keep the sativa into the spectrum of the buzz. It's very good daytime, uh, not overpowering. It has a very balanced TAC ratio. It's uh, fairly easy to grow and a pretty good yielder. The strain sage was originally developed for indoor use, but I've seen it grown very successfully in greenhouses. And I've even seen it grown outdoors if you put a big enough root system underneath it. It'll do pretty good yields outside. So it's one of those pretty all-around plants that does pretty well. Sage usually indoors, four or five foot, is what you want for full expression. Anything lower than that in a sea of green, and you're really going to suffer yield with it. Um, outdoors, you want to get it as big as you can get it. This strain sage is usually between 65 and 70 days. I think it has more to do with your light intensity and how far and fast you push the flowering hormone to them. The one thing I found growing sage is you really have to watch the water to it. It doesn't like wet feet and a lot of people miss up and overwater it in its frequency. Duration or, or, or amount, not so important, but it doesn't like to have wet feet because of the indica background in it. Sage is pretty close to Island Sweet Skunk in a cannabinoid profile um, in BC and I'd say pretty close here in California to not Blue Dreams but close to the THC profile of Blue Dreams. It comes across about the same buzz as Blue Dreams as well when it's done right. The Strain Sage is one of those ones that really responds to what you know how to put into it. It's not that it requires you to be a pro to grow it, but your yields will show how much you know how to take care of it and keep the food alive on it and keep the roots developed. 